A topic that is often discussed here in the preparedness community is the idea of harvesting small game during a survival situation to help supplement your nutrition. And it makes a lot of sense because if you're starving during a long-term SHTF scenario, going out in your backyard and taking out whatever squirrel or rabbit you can find and eating it would help you gain some protein and calories. But there are a lot of dangers involved with eating small game that a lot of people haven't thought about. And here's the thing, a huge majority of those who are in the preparedness community have this concept already as part of their preparedness strategy. They have a 22 long rifle, or possibly they've even gotten into the idea of traps, which I highly suggest if you're in a suburban or urban area, rather than firing off shots and hoping nobody else hears it. But those people have thought about how they're going to eat these animals, but have they thought about the dangers of eating these animals and what they might need in order to remedy some of those consequences? And that's what we're going to talk about today because as prevalent as this concept is, you don't often hear the discussion as to what is or is not safe to eat and what you should be concerned with. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about that. The first group of animals we're going to discuss is one that I have a personal vendetta against, and that is ground squirrels. And right now I'm under a Red Dawn invasion style scenario here on my property, and I'm trying my best to repel them, but they just keep coming. So wolverines for life, but ground squirrels are edible, and they've been eaten for years and years and years. And of course, anytime you're gonna eat wild game, you want to inspect it and cook it thoroughly, right? But with ground squirrels, the threat actually comes in a different form. They have been known to carry the bubonic plague. Now the bubonic plague is not spread by eating their meat, it's spread by the fleas that infest the actual ground squirrel itself and their colonies. So the problem with ground squirrels is that if you're going to eat them, you have to either trap them or shoot them. And then when you go to harvest them, there's a possibility of fleas being on their fur that then get onto you and then spread the bubonic plague to you. And do you have the ability to deal with that type of a health concern during an SHTF scenario for the very, low amount of reward that the meat of that ground squirrel will provide. Now, of course, you're starving, you're starving, and you're gonna take risks, but this is a risk that you should be aware of before you make that decision. So they can possibly spread bubonic plague to you via the fleas that infest their colonies. The other issue with ground squirrels and eating them is that many farmers out there try to get rid of them via rodenticide, right? Poison for rodents. So if they have been treated with rodenticide but survived, that toxin can survive in their flesh for anywhere between weeks and months. And you don't know when the last time they were given a dose of that rodenticide was. So by eating a ground squirrel, which is considered a varmint pest species, there's a chance you're going to ingest the poison that was used to try to eliminate them. So understand that that's always in the cards when it comes to eating a lot of these varmint type animals. People wanna get rid of them, they'll use chemicals to do so. And then by eating their meat, you might be eating those chemicals, which could have long-term health effects. So these are just things you should be aware of before ingesting this game. I'm not trying to dissuade somebody from doing this if they're in a survival situation, because of course, eating is better than not eating in many, many ways, but understanding the risks involved could help you make better decisions or weigh out the risk versus reward ratio in that scenario. If you're only trying to supplement some of your stored away carbohydrates like rice with some of this meat, maybe that additional protein isn't necessarily worth the risk of the bubonic plague. Maybe it is at that point in time based on your malnourishment situation, but these are things to consider, right? So the second critter on this list is the more abundant critter for those who are in urban or suburban areas. And that's gonna be the tree squirrel. So we went from ground squirrels, which I thoroughly hate, to tree squirrels, which I don't mind at all. Now tree squirrels have their issues as well especially in urban areas, which is why you really need to pay attention to this because a lot of people who claim they're going to go out and hunt small game during the apocalypse for food are people in suburban and urban areas who see these types of animals all the time and assume that they'll be able to get quite a bit of them due to their mass population. However, urban squirrels are the ones you have to watch out for the most. And the reason is, is because they generally ingest things from the trash and things that have been in contact with roofing materials and things of that nature. So what that means is that their meat could be filled with toxins from eating that disgusting part of our society and then passing it on to you through their meat. So that is a consideration, whereas wild squirrels that you'll find out in the woods don't have those same issues. But if you're hunting a squirrel that literally lives in New York City, it's probably eaten anything you can think of that's disgusting that might be in New York City. Not to mention, they also are known to carry things called prions. Now, prions are kind of an interesting topic that I don't have a science degree enough in to go and talk about. However, what I can tell you is that one of the risks associated with eating these squirrels is that prions are basically 
things that cause proteins within your brain to fold and can cause catastrophic damage to your brain. Best way for me to explain it without pulling out some sort of medical book, right? So either way, is that something you can easily fix on your own with the medicines that are available to us as preppers? No. Same with the toxins that might be in the meat due to them eating who knows what's in the trash. So these are the risks that you're taking by eating a, a tree squirrel. Now, there are times where eating one might be the only thing you can do, and that's just what you're gonna have to figure out based on the risk versus reward ratio. However, if you're in an urban environment, this is a much more dangerous risk factor than if you're in a rural setting where these squirrels live in the trees and eat nuts and berries that don't necessarily rummage through trash all day. So these are considerations to make and be aware of now. Now, you see this 1022 right here, kind of decked out in a pretty sweet way if you ask me, and you see this trap right here, well, that's thanks to the biggest supporter of the channel, which is Midway USA. And Midway USA has just about anything you could ask for when it comes to harvesting small game. So definitely keep them in, them in mind if that's part of your preparedness strategy, and huge supporter of the channel, so thank you to Midway USA. But the third critter on this list that I have no real problems with until it comes to garden season at times, but rabbits. And rabbits are a very abundant food source. And in fact, they're in a lot of people's preparedness plan when it comes to even just farming them in the sense of breeding them and how quickly they reproduce and create more of a population. I mean, they're a great option for that reason. However, if you're just gonna go out and hunt rabbits, there are things that you need to be aware of as well. And the biggest one, and this is just why I wanna mention it because people think about eating rabbits all the time but don't really know all the consequences that might be associated with it. The biggest one you hear about is the protein poisoning aspect of eating rabbits. What does that mean? It means that you've eaten too much protein and not enough fat or carbs, and what that can do is overload your systems, including your kidneys and your liver, and basically you die even though you have a full belly, right? Now, this is a malnourishment aspect, but generally this stuff happens during the winter time when the rabbits are already lean from not having access to food themselves, and then if you find yourself starving already, and then you find a abundant source of rabbits to eat, those rabbits might not save your life in the sense of allowing you not to starve. So that's a huge consideration to make because it might seem like a good idea at the time, but the high level of protein and the low level of fat and carbs within that meat means that you might still starve to death and you might actually accelerate that starving due to the fact that you'll shut down some of your organ systems by having so much protein in your diet. Now, this isn't necessarily a big issue if you have a more balanced nutritional diet put together, especially in the sense of having food prepped and put away and you're just using rabbits as supplementary, right? So that's totally understandable if that's what you're doing, but just wanted you to be aware of the fact that if you're only eating rabbit, and especially during the months where rabbits don't have access to food and you're already in starvation zone, well, it's probably going to be more harmful to you than helpful at that point in time. And these are just considerations to be aware of now, and if you don't know about protein poisoning, search it and you'll find a lot about rabbits, I guarantee you, okay? Now, the next animal on this list that a lot of people have access to and a lot of people talk about eating, and a lot of people have eaten for years and years and years, and there's really no issue with eating them in general, is pigeons. Pigeons are everywhere, especially in urban areas, and people call them sky rats, but in reality, pi pigeons were a staple food diet before chickens took over in the, the, the poultry department. But there are things wrong with pigeons when it comes to eating them, and it's very similar to what's going on with the squirrels when it comes to urban areas generally, okay? So, Pigeons don't have any more diseases than any other birds, right? They're not special in that regard, but they do tend to pick into a lot of disgusting food and trash if they live in an urban environment. And things that pigeons have been known to have in their systems, and which is why they're not recommended to be eaten, especially in major cities, is rodenticides, just like what they try to get rid of the ground squirrels with, battery acid, and lead, because these birds are just picking through trash and eating whatever is there and whatever it's contaminated with. And especially in me major metropolitan areas, you don't know what's been dumped in that trash that ended up on that french fry that that pigeon is eating now, but it's going to eat it either way. So it's not necessarily that you're going to get a bunch of diseases from pigeon, it's just that their meat is likely infected with some sort of toxin of some degree, and you just have to weigh out whether or not that's worth the risk when it comes to eating these birds, right? And this applies to the urban areas more so than the rural areas just because of what is accessible to these animals in those areas. But either way, it's a consideration to keep in mind. I'm not trying to say you can't eat pigeon. I'm trying to let you know why you might need to make a more informed decision before you do just start eating pigeon, all right? Next on the list is slightly controversial. And look, this is not every single aspect or every single item 
of each species that could possibly make you sick or kill you during an apocalyptic situation. This is just a quick overview to give you some ideas to consider because I don't know everybody's individual situation and you might have access to different types of animals than I do. Where I live, I don't really have to worry too much about eating ground squirrels because I'm inundated with things like pheasants and deer and other game animals that are generally eaten more often than ground squirrels. However, I do have a huge population of them, and if I did need to eat them for some reason, I at least know what the risks are now. And this is why I'm bringing this information to you, just in case you live in an area where one of these animals might be prevalent, but you need to understand what is the most sensible animal for you to be targeting based on your location, right? Which is why it brings me to this next animal, which is cats. Nobody wants to eat cats, but, and this is, this is just fact, okay? I'm not trying to share anything weird here, but, Actually, lots of cats are eaten throughout Asia on a regular basis. So, what does that mean? Well, we've learned a lot about what eating cats is like and how dangerous it can be based on some of the parasites that they carry. So, why would you not want to eat cats? I mean, we all saw a Book of Eli eat, eating the cat. It's one thing that definitely happened, and uh, not to mention the cat oil, which has tried to be pawned off as chapstick. But either way, Eating cats, because cats are very prevalent, people will be starving and people might be willing to eat cats and people in parts of the world right now eat cats on a regular basis. Well, the reason you would want to avoid eating cats is because they're primary host to parasites that cause toxoplasmosis, which is very dangerous to those who are immunocompromised or pregnant and can cause birth defects in babies that, um, you know, that have that exposure based on being in the womb. So, cats have these types of parasites that you have to be worried about and they also, their meat can transmit Clostridium botulinum, which is basically botulism. So you can get botulism from cat meat, and it's a concern that's high enough on the list that people want you to be aware of it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So you can either get a parasite that causes toxoplasmosis or possibly botulism, and there's not a lot of good ways to fix that in an SHGF scenario. So yeah, you might need to eat a cat because you're starving otherwise, but just be aware if you do, you might want to watch out for the warning signs of botulism and toxoplasmosis, all right? And if you are pregnant or you're immunocompromised, it's probably not worth eating a cat in general at that point. Just my opinion. You do what you think is best for you. I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. Now, the last animal on this list, because of how abundant they are and how easy they are to come by, and which is why I have to address it, even though it's not something that I suggest or encourage or even would like to partake in myself at any point in time in my entire life, is dogs. Because I mean, they're man's best friend. They're loyal companions. I would not eat one of my dogs. But there have been many times throughout history where people have to eat dogs. And there are lots of incidents in Asia where dogs are eaten. This is just fact. I'm not trying to just say things here. I promise you. But either way, why should you not eat dogs? Well, some of the things dogs have could be very detrimental to you as well. Dog meat might have parasitic worms, including Toxcara canis. I probably said wrong, but I don't care. What that does? Well, it does a lot of things. It can give you myocarditis, it can attack your respiratory system, and it can eat at the back of your eyeballs, causing blindness. So starving in the apocalypse is bad, but going blind is also ill-advised. So that's a risk you have to decide on whether or not it's worth taking. Not to mention, maybe you already have prior training in certain federal agencies where Killing dogs is not a big deal to you. And if that's the case, then I guess go for it. But for many of us, that would be a very hard thing to do and decide on. Either way, the other thing that dogs have that's a concern and has shown to be an issue when people eat them is transmission of rabies. And it's not even just the rabies of the dog meat or the rabies of the dog itself. It's the rabies cross-contamination factor of whatever tools are being used to harvest the meat and everything else, right? So basically, you just risk a higher encounter chance with rabies by eating dogs than a lot of other animals that are out there. Now, look, this list doesn't cover everything. You could go into other animals too. You could talk about I don't know, raccoons, for example, because they're everywhere, right? You could talk about different types of birds besides pigeons. Maybe you want to know if you can eat crows or not. That's all stuff that you can easily research. If I made that video with every single small animal in the entire United States and let you know what you could or could not do in the sense of eating it, this would be a very, very long video. The idea here was to give you at least some examples as to why you might want to be hesitant when it comes to eating small game as your main primary source of survival nutrition. And if you are going to find yourself in a situation where you have to eat small game, because that can happen, and like I said before, I want to preface this by talking about it at the end for some reason, but 
every animal I listed can be eaten. Like these, I'm not trying to tell you you cannot eat them. I just want you to know what the risks are when it comes to eating them during a survival situation, because if you don't have ways of treating some of those consequences, then you might die sooner than if you would have just not eating, eaten it at all to begin with, right? And when I say that, what I mean is you might want to have antibiotics, you might want to have anti-parasitic medications, you might want to have, I don't know, just basic Pepto-Bismol or Imodium AD or whatever. You, you, you're not going to be able to process some of this meat the way that you would like to think you could. And there's a good chance you might need some medicine to deal with whatever the aftermath is. So keep those things in mind because yes, small game can supplement your nutrition if need be during a long-term SHGF event, but you also risk quite a bit by eating it. And are you prepared to deal with those consequences? So if you don't have the medicines that you need in order to take care of a parasitic infection, or if you don't have medicines that help you deal with diarrhea or things of that nature that come along with food poisoning, then it's probably not worth the risk of eating things that are extremely questionable versus if you have all those things and you really are starving, then maybe there's a little bit more of a reward there than, there, than a risk. That's what you have to decide for yourself. I just wanted to bring this information to the forefront because I don't hear it spoken about quite a bit. I do hear a lot of talk about eating these animals and harvesting them and using them to your advantage during an apocalyptic survival situation, but you rarely hear about the dangers of doing so. So I thought I would just put it out there as a PSA to just let you know if you do plan on eating ground squirrels, for example, you might want to research what exactly that could bring along with it in the sense of risk and make sure that you have ways to deal with that afterward. Hopefully that gave you some things to think about. If you guys have anything else for me, magicpepper.com is always a good site to visit. You can contact me there directly if need be. You also have the subscribe star if you want to support the channel directly. It's five bucks a month. We do preparedness incentives, direct communications. There's also exclusive content there. So I think it's worth it, but it's up to you because you know, you're already supporting me by being here, subscribing to the channel, liking the videos and everything else that you all do. So I greatly appreciate that already. And the subscribe star is not necessary, but it is appreciated as well. So anything else you have for me, just let me know. And besides that, that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.